Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Got Stacy with me. Hello. This is a from a conversation that Stacy and I was having the other day, or a conversation that Stacy was having the other day at me. I wouldn't participate in our conversation. <laughs> you remember what I'm talking about? I do not. When we were talking about uh, working in the field. And, oh, okay. Well, what, what was what was your art? What were you talking about? Um. Well, we had you lot. And you said um, that uh, about doing two classes a day. Mm -hmm. And um, I know how much time and study and time that you put in with just one class. Mm -hmm. So when you said two classes, I guess my initial shot was like, I guess that time was going to double. So you go in from uh, your four hours on one class of time and preparation that you do in one class. So now it's like the whole day. And so I said to you, um, what about, the gist of my thing was what about, you know, the labor that we have to do in the field? So this is going to be kind of a follow-up class to the class we did, Jobs Are for Gentiles. Look at right here in the King James Version of the Bible where it says to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. This is talking about food. This is talking about clothing and all of the things that we need to survive in this life. The father is telling us don't be like the Gentiles and go out and try to seek that stuff for yourself, but to go out and seek the kingdom of God first and those things will be added unto you. Ain't that what it's saying? Yeah, that's what it's saying. Mm -hmm. It okay. says, um, seek, seek the, um, the seek the first, seek ye first, the kingdom of God. Yeah. Okay. So my question then would be, which would you rather have? The hope that I could go out with my hands and produce. A crop that the family could eat or a guarantee that we would have food to eat which one would you take I would take a guarantee okay. well ain't this what they're saying right here that if you seek the kingdom of God first that you would have that guarantee yeah as it's saying that and I do know that um, um sometimes you're um emotions get before your um your thoughts or whatever so i do know that but you know i do know that we are required as well to do labor and that's not what you were saying you were not saying that you were not going to participate or help or anything like that but and i could have just been in that mode um but you know I do understand that we do are we are supposed to seek seek the Father and do the things that He will have us to do first. Seek the kingdom and and He will add He will give us those things that we need. So let me ask you this. What do you think about um um because I've I've heard on this this channel uh, there's only maybe two channels that I follow. Or look at other than um, um, our channel or your channel um, that is um, Pastor Dow and following following Yahshua and he often talks about how people men are are they study all day they read all day and this is this doesn't pertain to us and their wives go out to work I mean go out like in the city to work um, what do you think about that and he said that they those guys say that that's okay do you think that that's that's fine well yeah actually I do I think I think the error is on the woman's part for going out and working I believe that she's showing a lack of faith in what the father is saying and, and what the scripture is telling her to do. I believe, yeah, she's acting like a Gentile. He's doing what he's supposed to be doing. 
and and you know there, there may be a few elements that he's missing if he's reading all day he may, he may not be doing everything that he's supposed to be doing but let, let's let's assume that he is actually actively seeking first the kingdom of god in what he's doing all day we ain't gonna just you know make being on this you know assume that he's just sitting there reading all day we're gonna say he's seeking first the kingdom of god all day yeah he's doing what he's supposed to be doing she's being gentilish she's being a gentile she's actually being unfaithful she's being undoubtful she's being worldly she is actually forsaking the kingdom of heaven and going back and and embracing the world's ideas doing what the world says do yeah she's an heir 100 percent, i believe that i remember when we first um left the city you said that um before you went back to work that i would go back yeah why did you say that because i ain't going back i ain't never going back <laughs> you know back in back in the 1990s back in 1990 something i was studying history uh down there at the local college and I learned about the Industrial Revolution and how they said that during the Industrial Revolution there was a change in humanity because the woman started working beside the man. Not only was the man going out to work every day in the factories, but all of a sudden you had the women out there in the factories and you had the children out there too. And there was a change in the culture. Mm -hmm. And so it was after I, after I understood that that day when that hit me and I understood that I came home to you that day and asked you if you wanted to become a stay-at-home mom and I jumped to the to the idea because that's what I really wanted and um, from that day on yeah from the night making from, moves that that's what I would do and from the year about the year 2000 until now you haven't had to punch a clock or go to any any job of that of that nature ever since and so what has that been now that's been 20 years now mm -hmm. that you have been a stay-at-home mom right and when I decided that I was going to leave the workforce and I was going to seek ye first the kingdom of God what I was telling you was is no you will go back to work before I will yeah you will enter the workforce before I will go back meaning I ain't going back right I ain't never going back right Talking about the guy that's sitting at home studying all day. That's exactly what he's supposed to be doing. That's exactly what he's supposed to be doing. Like I said, I'm sure since, who did you say he was? What did you say the guy's name was? Dr. Phil? What did he say? No, um, following, following Yahshua. Well, I'm sure he's, he's speaking to the situation negatively towards the man because he's, he's, recognizes his own faults when he thinks about that individual and how he's probably going off to some job somewhere and you know and and all of this all day and his spirit inside of him wishes he was in wishes he was at home studying and serving the father all day he has a sense of jealousy so I'm sure that he's speaking negatively towards the guy's situation. I bet that guy is seeking the kingdom of heaven. I bet he is doing exactly what he's supposed to be doing. Yeah, I I agree with you. You know that as well too. He, um, you know, I, I like a lot of his teachings. I like a lot of his wife's teaching. They they um, cater mostly to women. I'm saying the women. He says the women are telling him they want to be at home. Mm -hmm. but their husbands are but the house has to have income mm -hmm. but that also speaks of the women's lack of faith right definitely speaks to the women's lack of faith because we are a household that that where neither of us go outside and work we don't have home businesses or nothing like that but we are zero income we have zero income but we are are provided for well, yeah, because we're seeking the kingdom of God first, and everything we need, we, we, we are provided for. Right. And neither one of us, ever since 2014, neither, one of, neither of us have punched the clock on a job. Mm -hmm. That's almost, that's going on, going on six years that we have been dependent on the Father to provide for us. And... I don't care what anybody say. We're better off than you know almost everybody around us. 
Yeah. You know, even the guy down the street with the huge chicken houses or whatever, he's in debt. You know, he's in debt up to his eyeballs. He don't own none of that stuff. Right. You know what I mean? None of that is his. You know, I don't, I, I, you know, thank the Father in heaven. I don't owe nobody nothing. Not one person on this planet do I owe a thing to for, mm -hmm. for, for anything that I own. My vehicles, my houses, my lands, my animals. Nothing. You know, there's not one bill coming in that mailbox that I have to pay. Not one bill come through that mailbox. And you would say that the only thing that you see that you're doing different is uh, seeking first the kingdom of God. Put or? my faith and trust in him to provide. He wants to be our provider and, you know, accident or, or whatever, because I don't feel like I had, you know, much to do with it other than, you know, being a little bit naive, a little bit gullible, you know, when it comes to the word and just following it or whatever, blindly following what the word says. I can't really take credit for, you know, having the foresight that this is how it was going to play out but putting faith in what the word was saying and doing and seeking the kingdom of heaven we have land you know we have we we, we have a house you know you know we may not have you know a bmw 335i sitting out there in the driveway like we used to but <laughs> but you know we get where we need to get yeah mm -hmm. Anything else? Mm, I think that's it. I think that answers my question. You might have shut me up. No, I ain't shut you up yet. I'm going to come over <laughs> here. I'm going to come over here to the third testament of the Bible. I'm going to show you some verses coming out of here. Um, I'm going to start with this one. This was the, This is the weakest argument first. We've already talked about this in another class when we were talking about how the 144,000 will lose their jobs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in this verse, all right, read this part right here first. I know that if I were to summon everyone, the majority would not listen because they are too occupied with their daily tasks. Now, see, this is what's going on with uh, um, the individuals over there that's, you know, the family where the guy's at home reading all day and the woman is going off to work all day. This, this is what's going on here. You know, because she has the daily tasks that she has to, to, to mind or she thinks she has to do every day, she's not able to hear the Father. She's not able to communicate with the Father. I don't want to take a completely opposite stance than Chris, Brother Chris, um, without hearing you know him say firsthand, I can only go by what, what you're saying here, but those women who say they want to stay at home what do they want to stay at home for? What do they want to do when they get there? Do they just want to be at home like and be doing what they think their husband is doing, sitting back reading all day? You know, are they jealous because, you know, he, he you know, seems to be not laboring in the workforce all day? Do they really want? Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, what if you're especially if you're living in the city. What are you going to be doing every day? Yeah, does does she really want to seek the kingdom of of heaven first, or does she really, or does she just want the roles to change where she gets to stay at home mm -hmm. and he go to work? Yeah, and 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 you know, that's what it sounds like. She gonna probably be at home watching television. Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's what we do. Yeah, <laughs> you know, she if we had a television and you were off uh, at work. I mean, because when that's what happened, when you would go to work, you know, I would watch television and do my task and watch some more television and stuff like that. But, yeah. I think I had going? almost got you trained in, in, in um, before we left Egypt or whatever to, to listen to it, where you turn it up loud yeah, and, up and, loud and, and like, yeah, you know, you don't have to actually sit there and watch <laughs> it. You know, you could actually just listen to it, just turn the volume up and you can actually listen to it and do other stuff. But yeah, is that what she actually wants to do? She wants to be at home doing that stuff? Yeah, I think because that's what, you know, we are taught. The men go to work, the women stay at home. Yeah, that's what you're taught by the world because according to what we read in the scripture, he don't want either one of you leaving the house. He don't want neither one of you serving Babylon. He don't want you serving Egypt. He don't want he he wants to be our provider. 
It is because we are worldly minded and have gotten away from what he wants us to do. Are we almost forced to go down there and 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 serve man? Because you have three choices in this world. You can serve man. Or you can serve the father and he will provide for your food, clothing and shelter. The only other choice is to serve nobody. And you're going to be homeless. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's your choices. You can serve man, the father, or be homeless. So my point in this verse right here is the separation from those daily tasks that's allowing that individual to be able to take the time and seek the kingdom. Yeah. And because she, the woman, is still into her daily task, she's not going to be able to. She's not going to be able to seek the kingdom. And, you know, the family is divided or whatever. Mm -hmm. So see right here? Read that part right there. After they are free from their everyday responsibilities, I speak to them of love, of the eternal, of the spirit, and of true human and spiritual values. I have made them perceive life through their conscious and not through their physical senses. Yeah. So if she wants to stay at home and have a relationship, you know, with the with the father, she's going to have to get rid of those those daily responsibilities that's getting in her way. Well, I think a lot of this is that we covered in the um, the video. Jobs are for Gentiles, but you know, one one of the things that um, um, comes out to me as well is as the majority will not listen um, because they are too occupied with their daily tasks. So, you know, we, we you always say that the father speaks to the to the man first. Mm -hmm. In the second, in the first and the second era, he speaks through the man. Now the third era is different. That's uh, is it. The era we're in. Um, kind of. We're on the cusp of it. Sure. I mean, yeah. The third era actually started way back there in eighteen sixty six. But the thing is, the door was open. The automatic. The door was open instantly. Humanity has to catch up. So until that woman becomes spiritualized, you you still she's still going to have to go through her male figure in order to have communication with the father. Once she gets spiritualized, then she can talk to the she can communicate with him and hear his voice herself. She can already talk to him, but can she hear back? Right. right. And you know until she becomes and once once she becomes spiritualized, she will be able to hear back just like the man does. Okay. But she has to get to that point. Um, we're gonna get some comments on this video, but uh, mm -hmm. all right, so let's go to another let's go to another <laughs> verse here. And it's coming up here in chapter eight here. Now, this is what I was talking about right here. When what what did, what did Brother Chris say? What did what exactly did he say? Did he say the man is in error? What did he say? That is yeah, so he's saying that the man is in error. The man is in error because he's staying at home and his wife who wants to be at home. Uh, is being made to go to work. Okay. The reason why I bring that up is right here. Read this part right. Read this verse part 50 right here. The disciple of Jesus is he who subjugates with the persuading and consoling words, who raises up and resuscitates, making of the defeated victors over themselves and over adversaries. So now, is this what the guy is doing? The, the, the individual, the, the man that's at home, Chris says he's just reading, or the wife said he's just reading, you know, and she's she's probably speaking negatively towards the situation. But is is this what he's doing? Is he resuscitating? Is he raising up? Is he uh, consoling? Is he persuading? You know, or is he just reading? Right. You know, they, they make it sound negative towards that man that's there just spending all of his time just reading. But, you know, he's probably doing more than that. You know, he's probably he's probably um, helping out his brothers. He's probably he's probably doing a service for the Lord that's not being recognized, that's not being appreciated. Mm -hmm. Read 51. The apostle of Christ cannot shelter selfishness in his heart thinking only of his own sufferings and worries, 
but neglects his own to concern himself with his brothers with absolute confidence that nothing is neglected for the father immediately helps those who have abandoned their own worries to assist a child of the Lord that needs spiritual substance. Now, without knowing the individuals involved, I'm going to assume that the guy is doing that. This is exactly what he's doing. He's abandoned his own worries. He ain't thinking about himself like she is going down there to the office trying to make a dollar bill. She's worried about her own self and her own kids and probably nobody else. He is at home worrying about his brother. He he has he has what does it say? With absolute confidence that nothing is neglected. He he neglects his own to concern himself with his brothers. So he's worried about his brother. And by doing so, what does it say? It says the father immediately helps those who have abandoned their own worries to assist a child of the Lord that needs spiritual sustenance. So while he's out here trying to uplift his brother and trying to teach and shed light on, you know, this dark, dark world right here, he is being provided for. Right. You know, the father's taking care of his needs. Like 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 what we read over there in King in the King James Version, those things will be added unto him by doing the father's work. It is she that's doing that, and that ain't what I wanted to focus this video on, you know. Right. But, you know, it is she that's doing the work of man and doing the work of Babylon and doing the work of the beast while he's doing the work of the father and he's being provided for. Yeah, that's sort of like, um, and, and I'm going to say that we don't know the gist of the conversation. You know, we don't, we know how women can be. They can be, they can uh, say things that aren't true or manipulate uh, and be deceptive about things that having a one-sided conversation and telling him, you know, the bad parts of him. But uh, knowing that other women and half the men going to sit there and say, oh, that ain't right. You shouldn't be like that. You know, like you said, like you told me one time, women will sit there in her face and say that she's right and everything, you know, that what she's saying is correct. And then once she's gone, then they sit back and talk about how dumb she is. <laughs> we'll do that. So, uh, we don't really know the gist of the conversation, but but I understand what you're saying about how how um, once you start working for the Father, sitting down, studying, um, how the Father will provide for you, and He... And how we look, how we look at the person who's doing the right thing, which is studying, how we look at him as being as is it being bad, mm -hmm. and the person who's out there doing the labor, mm -hmm. you know, working for man who's mm -hmm. working the beast. We we always tell about how people say, "Oh, he got a good job. He's mm -hmm. doing the good thing." Yeah. But the person who's doing what the father would have them do now he's considered lazy. Uh, mm -hmm. Ain't doing nothing but sitting around reading and all that that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's exactly what's going on. So we said it over and over. We don't know that situation that those individuals were were in. I haven't even heard this pastor. This I haven't even heard this Chris guy talk or whatever on the subject or any other subject for that matter. But you know, this kind of stuff is going on all around the world. Mm -hmm. You know, when I first got started, you know. Back in the 90s, I was in this position. This is where I was at. You know, my wife was going out and working, and I was at home reading. Yeah, I was making cassette tapes instead of YouTube videos. I was doing the same thing I was doing now. But I remember her coming home from work, you know, basically uh, rehashing the conversations that she had had with her coworkers. On how I was just at home doing what I wanted to do and all of this and, you know, doing all of that. Yeah, I ain't mean, never really considered it. Well, don't really know the situation. Her, she going and telling her co-workers one thing and and that he's just sitting at the house doing nothing all day, just reading his Bible and I'm out here doing work. Yeah. Yeah, but shoot, if she had a new the work I was doing out there in the streets, man. If she had a, took the time, I believe, to look at 
the work that I was doing, if she had a, took a day off work and actually went down to the streets and watched what I was doing, she might have had a different mindset. But I don't think she really wanted to to have that different mindset because then that would have, you know, tilted the conversation away from her favor. When you say, well, you know, no, he's, he, he's helping a lot of people. He's doing a lot of good work down there. It's easier for her to just put blinders on her eyes, close her eyes, and just say, well, you know, he's just reading. He's just doing whatever he wanted to do. I don't know if that makes sense. All right, let's go. This is the last verse right here. Look at verse 16. Coming out of chapter 22. Take up your cross and follow me with humility. Trust that while you are busy in consolation and giving peace to a heart or giving light to a spirit, I will be in charge of that relating to your material life and will neglect nothing. So there it is. Yeah, that's it. That's that's it. So, I mean, that's why I asked you a few, a few minutes ago, which one would you rather have? Would you rather have me, a rookie farmer, out there in the field, working all day, mm. hoping, praying, wishing the seed going to come out of the ground, wishing the rain going to hit it, wishing... We're going to get out there and weed it and add fertilizer and hoping that the deer don't eat it up or the sheep don't eat it up or the bugs don't eat it up. Right. And praying that we know how to harvest it and put it away in a barn. Definitely trying to get resources that we don't have. Hoping that, yeah, a resource, hoping that we can buy the seed. But even once we got it in the barn, hoping that it's not going to mold, hoping that it's not going to go to waste. Right. Wishing that we're going to be able to, you know, eat it or, what, or whatever. You know, praying that, you know, it, it, it don't just go to waste after that. Do you want to take all of those chances? Or would you rather have a guarantee? This right here is a guarantee that by making these YouTube videos is that you will be provided for. Yep. It's a guarantee. And so that's the way I look at it. That's why when we were having a conversation earlier, I didn't have much comeback or much argument or say much to it because this is what's in the back of my mind right here. This is what I know. This is what I know in my heart. I will be in charge. And this is the father speaking. I will be in charge of that relating to your material life and will neglect nothing. Now, you think back, you think back on our own personal testimony. Right. When we first got started. When we first came to this property, when we bought this property in 2014, how, you know, we worked on the house and got the house going um, until sometime around 2016 when, you know, we used up all the, the savings, the retirement funds and, you know, everything in order to build this house and get us a place to stay, how hungry we became. Mm -hmm. we, were, how, we were hungry for a while. Yeah. Right? Right. You know, we, we want plenty of days, you know, just eating pears or just eating figs or or nothing. Yeah. <laughs> or on some days with Nathan, nothing. You know, there was a few days. Not there's a Lord, not many where, eat, where there was absolutely nothing, nothing, nothing to eat, you know. But how long do you think it lasted? And I know you just guess it. I know you haven't sat down and, and taken the time to think about it. And I'm going to tell you the right answer here in a second. But just think about how long you, you, you remember that period lasted. Um, that period lasted, um, I want to say about, it seemed like about a year or so. Now, think about when Hermes Academy started. Hermes Academy started in the fall of 2017. And if you remember, the winter of 2017 was when I went to Washington, D.C. to do that work for my mom on her house or whatever. Mm -hmm. Have we had a hungry day since then? Mm -mm. That's what changed. While we were building a house and farming and doing all of this stuff associated with our own self, we had a lot of hungry days, even though we had money. 
Right. Yes. Even, you know, there was an income coming in. It wasn't a lot, but there was, you know, there was, it wasn't enough to file taxes on or nothing like that, but it was, you know, money that was coming in on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. But yet we had days where we were hungry. We didn't have food. But since the early parts of 2018, where I've been focusing a lot of my time on the ministry, we haven't had any hungry days. Right, and it makes me think too about how we were um, we were doing little things like I was doing eBay, yeah, and stuff like that. And we so we had a little money coming in, not much, but we were still hungry. Still with that. But once I said, I don't want to do eBay no more. You know, we're not doing this no more. And we both basically just let go of the money. No money coming in. Mm -hmm. And started focusing, focusing on, on seeking yeah. the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Once we started doing that, seeking the kingdom of heaven first, then we didn't have to worry about money anymore. So once again, I'm going to ask you this question before we close out. Do we tell people that they should leave their jobs and just seek the kingdom of heaven? Um, because everybody's not ready and everybody uh, are they I don't tell nobody to leave their job because like I said a few minutes ago there's three things you can do in this world you can serve man you can serve the father or you can be homeless and if somebody right now who's listening to this video or going out there to the job every day decides you know what I'm just gonna quit my job but yet they are not prepared to follow the Father, meaning they don't know about the law, they don't know about right. the rules, they not they don't know everything they they gonna end up homeless. Mm -hmm. You 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 know now if they can somehow make this transition right here where they're gonna immediately they're gonna immediately they can make the jump from uh uh, uh bagging groceries at Walmart to consult to consolation or they can they can you know uh, stop writing them reports for the government if if they can somehow stop being busy doing construction for the man and start doing consolation for the father they will be all right if they can somehow stop giving shots down there at the doctor's office and start giving peace to the hearts of humanity all of the needs will be taken care of if they can stop, if, if somehow they can, they're, they're going to be able to overnight or within, you know, in a short period of time before them, you know, before they get hungry or whatever, stop providing light and power down there at the lecture company and start providing light to the spirit of humanity. What does he say? All of their material life. He says he will be in charge of their material life. That's food, that's clothing, that's shelter. Right. And he says he will neglect nothing. But if they just going to quit the job and, and, you know, like I did, you know, many years ago, just step out on faith the first time, you know, just going to step out on faith, you know, because, you know, that is a part of my testimony, too, mm -hmm. how I just stepped out on faith. You know, there, there's a difference between stepping out on faith and stepping out on the word. You know, you step out on the word, you have you have knowledge you have wisdom you have understanding on what you're supposed to be doing you have when things get hard you have something you can go back to like these verses and you can pull these verses out and you could use them to support your argument or whatever you have that when you step out on the word but when you step out on pure faith blind faith you ain't got nothing yeah well, stepping out on the word makes me think of uh when the messiah told uh peter them come and follow me the father is the word so they were stepping out on him but when you step out on faith, like you said, sometimes your faith gets uh, wavery. Yeah, and sometimes you don't know what you're supposed to be doing. Right. You know, like, 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 you know, when I did step out on faith, you know, what, what, what did I tell? I, I don't know if I've given this part of my testimony too much, but, you know, we got rid of, you know, everything that, you know, we thought we didn't need because we were stepping out on faith. Uh, we turned in the keys to the apartment building. And went outside the apartment building expecting some miracle to come and save us. And 
you know, we had stepped out on faith and by the end of the day, we were going to the ATM machine, checking the bank account to see if some money had, had miraculously appeared in the bank account. We didn't know what was supposed to happen. And if somebody were to just quit their job out of the blue, that's what they could end up doing, not knowing what it is they're supposed to be doing, and they could end up homeless. Right. You know? But if they, you know, but I'm not going to discourage anybody from doing it either, because what the Father says is true. If we will start to seek first the kingdom of heaven, then he will take care of our material needs. I say you, you might not have, you know, Porsches or Cadillacs to drive in. You know, you may not be eating lobster and, you know, filet mignon or whatever, but you will be all right. Mm -hmm. And you will be better. You're definitely going to be better off in the end for it. I think that's it. That answered my question. And what was your question again? My question is, uh... Are we supposed to be out there working and to get the things that we need uh, as far as uh, labor and homestead and, and, and things like that? The answer is yes, we are. We're supposed to be out there doing, we are supposed to be out there labor and doing stuff. But the thing is, we're supposed to, we've got to have our priorities straight. That's secondary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that's secondary. Yeah. You know, is 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 the the service to the father that's the primary responsibility. 